Well, hello there, my name is Vladimir and welcome to my home studio. Today we're checking out the Harley Benton uh, Fusion 2 EB, no, HHEBBK. <laughs> And right away you can tell that this guitar resembles uh, to Pete Thorne's signature from that other brand. And as I mentioned in my unboxing video, by the way, if you want to see me unbox this guitar and get my first reactions to it, uh, there's a link over here. And I'll try to make this link thing work. So that if it doesn't, then I'm just pointing here for no reason. Yeah, click that if it works to see the unboxing video. Otherwise, let's move on. Yeah, this guitar resembles the Pete Thorne guitar by that other brand. But in this case, I really don't mind because that brand doesn't produce anything in the kind of affordable range. And if you are a fan of Pete's or just want a really cool guitar, it's here, clocks at 299. And for that money, you are getting crazy specs. First of all, it's a mahogany body. In the specs, it says that it should have a maple, actually it says it should have an ultra quilted maple top or like maple veneer. But as you can see, <laughs> there isn't any veneer going on. I hope that secondary camera picks it up. No veneer going on. You cannot see any kind of uh, flame or anything through the color. It's just a nice black color with a slight hint of green, at least under these lights. And the binding here is natural binding, so basically they tape off this edge, then they paint the back side, they paint the, paint the front side, and then when they take the tape off, you get this result. I know this because I've done, well, actually I haven't done exactly the similar thing, but I have built a guitar that has binding and you need to tape it off. And this is completely unrelated information, but yeah. So yeah, just mahogany body, maple neck, and as I mentioned on my unboxing video, this is ebony, even though it looks pretty light, I guess I'm just used to ebony being really dark, but I don't mind. If they say it's ebony, I believe it's ebony. And hardware-wise, the guitar is just really well specced. Wilkinson two-point floating tremolo, which was set up really nicely. Let's see if this camera can po kind of pick it up in any way. Maybe it can. It was set up really nicely and worked right away. I did mention in my unboxing video that the tremolo arm would wobble, so that would be like when you would kind of screw it in, it would kind of, there would be a clunky sound and it would move a little bit. But thanks to Patrick, I'm completely forgetting your last name, uh, he mentioned that there might be a small screw uh, that helps to solve that issue. And indeed, over there is a small screw or like a slot for an, hex key that allows you to tighten the arm and now it works perfectly so thanks for the tip i would have probably missed that and yeah basically i've always been really impressed with wilkinson hardware and this is no exception then there's tone volume three-way pickup switch there's a coil split switch which we'll check out later and then on this side of the guitar there are also uh, kind of unbranded locking tuners. Let's put them this way, like that. Hope the camera will pick it up. Yeah, locking tuners as well. And on this particular guitar, the nut is pretty well done. The guitar, after playing it for a week, stays in tune pretty well. Uh, it does come with a wrong string set for me, but that's just a personal preference. The intonation was pretty good and like I didn't give this guitar any kind of setup I just unboxed it and I've been playing it ever since and it stays in tune pretty well and I think after playing it a little bit more it would probably stay in tune even better and I really like the fact that when you get a tremolo like this you also get locking tuners which really improves the tuning stability and last but not least comes with two Rosewell branded humbuckers I honestly don't know much about this, but they seem to be in kind of medium output range. Not like super PAF style, but not like a heavy metal pickup either. So something in between. On the back side, there's also a pretty nice kind of neck joint. It's not like most ergonomic neck joint ever, but it's pretty good and I didn't have any trouble accessing the 22nd fret 
Speaking of frets, this comes with stainless steel frets, which is insane for this price range. And the frets seem to be pretty nicely done. The fret ends are pretty good. And I haven't been able to find any kind of rough spots yet. And I, as I said, I've been playing this guitar for a week. I haven't actually played the other guitars almost at all during that time. And yeah. Just the overall quality of the guitar for $2.99 is something I'm not used to, <laughs> in a good way. Uh, something that I do find a little bit funny is that this kind of cover backplate thing is recessed, but this isn't. And I guess if you can see that joint over there, maybe to save some money they decided not to kind of recess this. Uh, it doesn't bother me that much, especially on the guitar in this price range, but I just found it a little bit funny. The guitar also comes with this nice little bag of tools and the tremolo arm, and there's all the hex keys you need to adjust everything on the guitar, and also this kind of rod thing that you'll use to adjust the thrust rod. And uh, So that's a nice little touch. To me, this guitar kind of represents the premium range of the Harley Benton guitars. I kind of wish it would come with a gig bag because that would just add to the experience. I just always like when the guitar does come with its own gig bag. It's just a really nice touch. It doesn't cost the company a lot. But uh, I know that Harley Benton is probably ordering all of the gig bags from some other place, which would mean that when the guitar would come in, uh, they do the quality check to it and then they would always need to kind of add a gig bag to that guitar and that adds labor time and everything like that and it would drive the prices up and then less people will probably buy the guitars and you know, that that's how it goes basically. So when you are buying this guitar, just grab a Harley Benton or Thoman gig bag for 10, 15, 20 euros and you're good to go. So it's, I just always think it would be a nice touch. Something that I found a little bit weird pretty early was the placement of the input jack. Uh, it's not in the way exactly, but kind of when you're plugging this in, the angle feels a little bit weird because it's pretty much pointing downwards uh, instead of being somewhere over here. Uh, I'm not sure what was the design choice behind this. Maybe just they didn't want to drill through the wood over here or this is a too steep of a curve so might be that but otherwise uh, for the money i don't have a lot of complaints there's even a volute over here to kind of prevent neck breakage and i like how they've shaped it i don't know if i can show it properly but like on some of the guitars especially on ltds or esps the volute starts a bit too early for me so when you are uh, kind of playing a bar F chord, for example, the thumb is on the volute already and that adds kind of additional pressure to my hand at least. And on this one, it's shaped nicely, which I really like. All right, let's move on to the sound spot. We're going straight from the guitar into my Rev Dynamis over there. And from the Rev Dynamis, we're going into the tune on Stop It Alive, where I'm using the closed back for by, by Rev amplification. Uh, I'll scroll through all of the pickup options. So we'll start on the humbucker mode and on the bridge pickup. Middle, so both pickups. Split the coil. As you probably noticed right away, this is a fat sounding guitar. 
Uh, I think it goes for this kind of LP style of sound, uh, but being a longer scale and having a tremolo, it doesn't actually sound like that guitar, but uh, it goes for this kind of fat mid-range sound, and I like that a lot. Let's switch to the crunch channel. All right, Rev Dynamis, Bridge Pickup, Humbucker, Crunch Channel. <laughs> Split the coil again. These split coil sounds are surprisingly impressive, <laughs> and I mean, what I mean by that is the fact that on many guitars where there's coil split, it's kind of a, I don't know, novelty is that the word, where it's there, but it's not really exciting or usable or anything like that. These sounds are good, like. <laughs> Actually on the track you heard in the beginning all the rhythm guitars were tracked in such a way that uh, one of the tracks, I don't remember, let's say the left one was always on the humbucker bridge mode. And when I would double track it on the other side I would actually hit the coil split and just increase the gain on the amp and track the other side. That's a really good sound, even the between positions are pretty good on the split. To me it actually resembles more of a kind of tele middle pickup sound than a strat. If you are looking for kind of a strat sounds, this is not the guitar for you. If you are looking for a kind of longest scale uh, LP or Tele style guitar, this is a thing you should get. That was a jazzy line that I played by accident. And yeah, so let's check out some heavier sounds and see how it behaves in those situations. Alright, Brave Dynamics Crunch Channel, the red aggression mode, control switch on as well. <laughs> the tremolo or like heavy use of the tremolo affects the tuning. <laughs> Not in perfect. 
perfect tune, but that's pretty impressive. I mean, add some graphite or like graphite pen, use the graphite pencil and it's in the nut slots and just kind of play this a little while and it probably will stay in tune. <laughs> Okay, that is impressive. I actually haven't tried that yet. So this is my initial reaction. It actually stays in tune. Pretty crazy for the money. So yeah, good sounding pickups, good build quality. It looks cool. It feels way kind of better specced and it just feels like a better guitar than a 299 price tag. I'm getting rid of the pick at the same time. Overall, I think this is a Pretty damn good guitar for the price. Uh, it could easily be sold for five, six hundred euros, and I think it still would be a great deal. Good sounding pickups, great hardware, good build quality. Two ninety nine. Uh, personally, I'm not a fan of the neck profile. It's just not for me. It's a bit too thin. But I'm an old soul. I'll old soul, and I like thicker necks. So, yeah. Otherwise. Okay, great guitar because of the neck profile I'm not going to keep it and I might be shopping for a new guitar at some place where this guitar comes from actually when this video comes out I might be at the Tolman store more info on that later or more info has been presented already something like that I don't know if you like this video please consider giving it a thumbs up leave a comment down below let me know what you think ask any questions you might have if you want to support what I do, get yourself a Catpick Studios t-shirt, links below in the description. And links to this guitar, by the way, in the description as well. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell as well. Thanks for watching this video, I shall see you next time!